Hello everyone, I am here today with Andy Crestodina from Orbit Media. And Andy has been in the web design and interactive marketing space since January of 2000. In that time, he's helped thousands of people do a better job getting results online. He's a true evangelist for content marketing and ethical digital marketing. Together with the team at Orbit Media, Andy has put out some of the best digital marketing advice available in hundreds of practical articles, including posts on virtually all of the top marketing websites. Then there's the book Content Chemistry, which is now in its fifth, a fourth edition. Andy is not only both a locally and nationally renowned speaker, but he is founder of Content Jam, Chicago's largest content marketing conference, currently in its fifth year. But he's also a regular face on the national circuit. If you go to a content marketing conference, the one Chicagoan you're most likely to hear is Andy Crestodina. And today we are going to talk about non-paid content promotion strategies. Andy, how are you today? I am good. I'm glad to be here. This is great. Awesome, yes, and uh, I am very surprised I got the Chicago in <laughs> my first try there. I was stumbling all over that uh, uh, earlier, but I, I saw mm -hmm. you um, at the recent Content Marketing World Conference, and uh, you just killed it, which is what drew me to you, and I am so interested in digging into this because I know you're going to offer lots of helpful tips. Great, yeah. So uh, just to kind of get things rolling here, um, I, uh, you know, I believe – and, you know, just from what I've seen out there and, and coming across, and but a lot of times people believe that, you know, getting the blog or podcast up uh, or their video or whatever the content piece might be is the finish line. But can you speak a little on the importance of some of the benefits you can expect from, from promoting your content? Yeah. It, the Another way to put that is you can expect almost no results, if anything at all, uh, mm -hmm. if you don't promote the content. So okay. uh, the example I gave in Cleveland, I said that, uh, and this is obviously true, uh, the New York Times does not have a list of the best books. They have a list of the best-selling books. <laughs> it's not That's about the best content. It's about the best promoted content. So another way to say it is uh, a, a, a great article with good promotion behind it will get its butt kicked 10 out of 10 times against a good article with great promotion behind it. Mm -hmm. So it really is – you know, if you were to just take the phrase, you know, content marketing, uh, the key there is the marketing. <laughs> it's not, yeah. it's a, yeah, the greatest, <laughs> the greatest content, none of us have ever seen it because it was not well promoted. And uh, so the job is really about content promotion. Gotcha. I, I think what's that saying? Uh, if content is king, then promotion is queen. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, And I do think that's, you know, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of people doing it incredibly well, uh, but I do think that that is a misnomer for some people. You know, they, they just talk about content, 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 and then they get it up there, you know, especially if you're small without a following yet. Then they're like, why is nothing happening? Well, because you're not getting it out there, right? Yeah. So, and, and today, again, there's all kinds of paid promotion strategy, we, you know, that, that um, we could talk about. But today, we're going to be concentrating on the non-paid content promotion strategy. So, mm -hmm. uh, Andy, can you just kind of, you know, list out a couple of the best places to go about this, and then we'll start to dig into those individually as we go along here? Sure, sure. So I'd like to keep it really simple. And if you're talking about non-paid and if you're talking about pure inbound or just content marketing, you're basically promoting content through three main channels. Search, as in organic search engine optimization, social media, and email marketing. I think it's really easy and to just think of it that way, and there's, you know, you could slice it up into smaller pieces or add things maybe, but mostly that's it. It's search, it's social, it's email, and any piece of content, anything that you make, whatever you publish next, can be promoted through one of those three channels. The best content is designed specifically for the channel in which it's going to get the most traction, uh, that's a, a big part of it. Is the, is the, it's about creating content with the promotion piece in mind in advance. Okay. Well, cool. Let's start with um, a bit of the social part. Let's start with mm -hmm. Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, let's just have you dig into some of the best practices and in, in your experiences uh, in working with Twitter. Sure, sure. So social is uh, extremely visual. So we have to pay special attention to creating something that has a powerful featured image. Uh, the website needs to make sure that it's being set up so that it, that image will appear when it gets shared. So uh -huh. anything that you that you uh, you wanted to get traction in social, make sure that you test it. There's little tags that you have to add in your programming or 
things that are done during the web design process that make sure that the featured image will appear in that piece if and when it does get shared. That's called the social snippet, although people don't know that name. That's actually what it's called when it appears in a social stream uh, when it gets shared. So the visual is a huge piece. You can increase the click-through rate of that visual, which tends to keep it in, you know, in an algorithmic context like Facebook, can keep it uh, visible there for longer. Uh, Twitter doesn't really have an algorithm, of course, so, uh, you, but you still care about the click-through rate. You can increase that click-through rate by putting the title or the headline of the article into the image itself. Okay. So if the image is just a picture, then that's less likely to get clicked and shared than it, it is a picture with the text overlaid. The headline is built into the image in the pixels of the image. That helps. Uh, faces help. Um, and also just content that is designed, that, like visual type content. Is there a diagram in it? That's going to help. So, you know, again, content can be designed with promotion in mind. And so making content that's super visual helps. But really, one of the keys to understanding social is to realize this. Articles do not get shared. It, articles have never been shared. The only thing that really gets shared is the headline. So huh. social media, it's a war for attention, and social streams move so fast and they're so crowded. It really is headline best practices. So ask a question, trigger curiosity, use a number, use power words, use emotion, uh, indicate very specific benefits. Now, use every trick you can in the headline authoring book. That's going to make a big difference when it comes to social media. And then finally, if you want to prime the pump, the smart way to do this is to make sure that, you know, if you're going to be, you want it to work well on Twitter, include some people who are active in Twitter in the article itself. So when you go to write this thing, maybe we're writing, you know, five best practices for headlines, go find some people who are active on Twitter who are experts at the topic. Invite uh -huh. them to contribute to the article, and once they're in the article, now you've got, uh, you know, you, you, it's called ego bait. You can mention them when you share it, and they're extremely likely to share it for you. That can uh, really kind of uh, grease the skids and make sure that thing's going to reach a little farther. Content optimized for social media really does need to include contributor quotes from relevant people. Uh -huh. Yeah, best way to get... Um reaching out to influencers is to scratch your backs, you know, include them, write about them, tell them, and all they have, all you have to do is tag them, you know, and, and that's what you're saying is, you know, when you send out the tweet, you know, say, at so-and-so mentioned blah, 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 and, mm -hmm. and that way they'll see it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and can you clear something up for me real quick on this? Uh, you know, there used to be that period in front of the the at sign, like if you mm -hmm. put the period in front of there, it would show it to everybody, and if you just did the at, it would only go to the person. I heard that was going to, that no longer applied, but do you know if it does or not? Because I see I people doing it both it. ways. And I, I, it's I, funny. I, I keep meaning to look it up, David. I'm, not, I'm honestly not positive, but I don't think that it's necessary anymore. Twitter made okay. a bunch of changes recently, and I think that's gone now. But so yeah, you, if, I, if I'm going to tweet at somebody and only want them to see it, that there's no other way to go about that except for a direct message now or a DM now? Right. Twitter is a okay. public forum. I, I mean, if you wanted to message someone so that only they would see it, you, you need oh. to have them, you need to be, you know, following each other mutually. Following each other. Of okay. I was wondering about that. I, I, was I like, think yeah. so, yeah. Okay. Well, even before, it, 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 even, even before when that was part of it, other people could still see it. They just had to, it would, but it would only appear in their streams if they followed both of you. Both of you, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that was just a random question. Now, now as far as Twitter, um, Timing, do you have any advice there? Any, any you know, posting late, yeah. early, certain times? What, what do you have to say there? there? Two schools of thought. One is to share when your audience is most active. Uh -huh. Another is to share when your competitors are inactive. So if you put yourself, put your own account into a tool like Follower Wonk, it will show you when your followerwonk.com, it will show you when your audience is active and you can make sure to share during those hours. For a lot of people, it's like 11 o'clock central because that's mm -hmm. lunch in New York and breakfast in L.A. Uh, the problem with that is that it's also the most competitive time. So mm -hmm. it's certainly worth trying, sharing at all our, you know, sharing in the wee hours of the, of the night. But a lot of the people who are extremely active in these channels would say, it doesn't matter when. You should be sharing all the time anyway. A guy like Jeff Bulas, he shares every 15 minutes. It's so to him, the question's ridiculous. Um, so I would encourage people to go beyond their comfort zone when it comes to frequency 
in these fast-moving streams where there's a lot of activity. Uh, but one final tip there, really, it's probably smart to share just before or just after the hour. So many people are using the scheduling tools and automation tools, and they're going to be like a million things that get shared right at 11 Central. Mm -hmm. Why not share at 10.58 or at 11.04? You're, it's, you're less likely to get smushed in there in the middle with everyone else who's all piling up on, a, on the hour. Very cool. Now, I actually was going to ask you about this, and you kind of mentioned it a little bit, but you know, how many times should you tweet out the same article? I think, I think you're right. I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, social media is great. You got to do it. You know, it's important. It's paramount. But at the same time, um, in very teeny, 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 tiny percentage of people who even follow you or even out there will see your tweet just because of the mm -hmm. streams going so fast. Uh, and I think a lot of people are like, well, I already did that. I already posted that. I already tweeted that. H how many times do you think somebody you could tweet the same article? I mean, is there too much, you know, even? People who have tested this really have trouble finding a ceiling. You know, it's like uh, how much is too much? You might think that it is way too much, and if you were in the audience, you'd be bored and you'd be tired and you'd unfollow. But people who say this have never really tried sharing enough that it could actually make someone uncomfortable on the other end. It's just very unlikely. We all know that the Facebook organic reach is something like 1%. Twitter, same thing, right? If you want everyone to see it, you should be sharing this thing dozens of times over weeks and months. Mm -hmm. So what what I usually so here's an example of how to how to um, step it up, it, and this is serious. And I'm using I'm going to mention some paid tools. So in the beginning, you're going to set you're, you're going to tweet it three or four times using a tool like Hootsuite, which has an auto scheduling feature or Buffer, which has an auto-scheduling feature, so it's going to go out several times. Then go look at the click report and see which of those tweets got the most traction. Mm -hmm. Now, you need to do it a bunch of times to really remove time as a variable, but you still might get a sense for, like, oh, the question headlines seem to work really well, or, oh, when I used that image, it worked really well. So if you can get a little bit of data on what actually is getting the most traction in terms of the, the, the post, then take the, the one that works the best in that channel, and use a tool like Edgar to have that one go out over and over. So Edgar is a social media scheduling tool that doesn't ever run dry. It just keeps things in rotation. MeetEdgar.com. Yeah, it's like 50 bucks a month. So wait, that now. Yeah, let, me, let me ask you about that. that that's interesting. So um, that's something with Buffer. You know, if you're going to post the same tweet even within – a few days or whatever, you got to mix it up or say, say, you've already repeated this one. Um, with this Edgar thing, you're saying that the way it works is you get, um, you know, you go and you do your, you see your, and Buffer offers its own analytics for this stuff. If you're using mm -hmm. Buffer, you know, they'll send mm -hmm. you. So then you identify the ones. So then you take your best ones and then you start plopping them in, into this Edgar thing, you know, over time. And the best ones are there, and then that one will just keep it going, and you use Edgar for your best performing ones, and you kind of just keep loading that one up with whichever fit the criteria that you feel makes a good post or whatever, or has a, a post that was well received. Yeah, so Edgar or so uh, so Buffer and Hootsuite have a queue, and it, it, go, it goes through the queue, and then the queue is empty. Mm -hmm. What Edgar does is you set up a schedule I want to share on this network at these times, and then you put in, then you create posts, and you put posts into categories. So if I have a post in a category going out at a certain time, it's going to randomly grab something from that big bucket of category, uh, in that category, to go out at that specific time. And huh. it uses Bitly as the shortener, so you still get reporting on it. So what you need to do, so these things are going to stay in rotation forever. So every, you know, every Monday at 9.46 a.m., you're going to be sending something. So uh -huh. it, it, what you want, you want to first load it with the things that you have vetted and confirmed that they are yeah. things that will have a high click-through rate. But then even after a while, you want to go back and look at, look at um, the stats for all these things that have been shared repeatedly in cycle over and over for weeks and months and go optimize that gear because that, that's when you want to make sure that these things are, um, you know, you're just sharing the best ones. So yeah, that's social that's media automation. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's great. Yeah, I mean that's a great way to go about it because, yeah, I mean you got to keep loading them up in Buffer and, and everything. Which don't get me wrong, I, I I personally use it and I think it's amazing, but um, 
this uh, this complementary tool with that here. Yeah, I mean, I, I need to look into that. I, I wasn't familiar with that. Thanks for that pointer. Mm -hmm. um, anything else uh, about Twitter you want to mention before we, we move on? I think I want to ask you a little bit about LinkedIn next. Yeah, what I would say about Twitter and LinkedIn and all social in general is that we just touched on and talked about how to be extremely efficient using it for one purpose, which is promoting content. But what we're going to get into here in a minute, I'm sure, is that these things are really good at networking. These are great tools for researching those influencers, finding relevant people, connecting with them, starting a conversation, gradually becoming friends with people, inviting people to collaborate with you. So mm -hmm. yeah, it, a lot of people will hear what we just said about social media automation or social scheduling and think, oh, this, this, you know, Andy's a spammer. And actually, it, the whole point of that is to free up more time for me to really mm -hmm. interact with interesting people and yep. build the true relationships, in fact, actual friendships. So, uh -huh. Yeah, That's yeah, we part. definitely are going to be, uh, be digging into, you know, finding people, you know, developing relationships, okay. uh, absolutely. And that's a great point. I'm glad you brought that up. But, yeah, and you made a great point. Yeah, no, you just – you're just automating the, you know, the table stakes. You got to get stuff mm -hmm. out, and you can't be sitting there. Oh, it's 11 o'clock. My alarm went off. Let me tweet. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and it's just it's just not efficient or realistic or smart or anything. So mm -hmm. yeah, you're just that's just the table stakes to get the stuff out. But yeah, I mean, you're you're going to be you know very very real person who is going to be interacting with other people. You just frame that time up. It's a great point. Now, um, LinkedIn, um, just a couple you know deals on the social part here. Um, how does one go about sharing here, in your opinion, you know, the same sort of thing as buffering it, or do you suggest uh, publishing here as well, where you can publish mm -hmm. a post and sharing through your account? Can you dig into that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Sure. So LinkedIn is going to be relevant to everybody for their own career, but it's not necessarily relevant to every brand when it comes to sharing content. I mean, there's lots mm -hmm. of B2C brands that just are not going to ever get any traction in LinkedIn. Uh -huh. Might have great networking benefits, might have great career and, and um, you know, personal branding benefits, but LinkedIn isn't, you know, unlike Twitter, uh, this isn't a network that's like a default yes for all, all brands. If you are anything B2B, it's going to make sense, and for a lot of other companies in B2C as well. But, uh, but yeah, so let's say that LinkedIn is a good idea. It makes sense. It's part of your strategy and worth investing in. Now, the things that you can share, obviously you mentioned there's two ways, is to post like an update and then this to, to publish a full-length article, uh, the posting an update really isn't any different from the sketch, from the, the tools we mentioned, Buffer, Hootsuite, Edgar. These can all help, you know, you really just with one extra click, you're going to be sharing on these networks as well, which is a smart thing to do. And you may find that your conversion rates are different. Check your analytics. Visitors may convert into newsletter subscribers at a higher or lower rate in one network over another. That will help you allocate resources and judge whether or not you should really be investing time into this network. Are those visitors taking action once they do visit? That's the ultimate goal, by the way. Um, but yeah, when it comes down to it, we're going to be sharing stuff um, uh, that that we've, you know, through content promotion, just sharing things that have gone live and, and you're trying to drive traffic to them. The idea of posting an actual full-length article is also you know, it's something that you can do anytime, anywhere, just by publishing that as your main um, piece. I don't recommend doing that for original content. I recommend putting stuff there after it's already been on your site for a while. It's a good place to republish, also mm -hmm. known as syndicate. So what I recommend is that you let that, that original article run its course on your site, and you've worked hard to promote it, and you're seeing the tail drop off, you know, of, of poor traffic. It might be... A month later, could be uh, a couple weeks, could be a couple months. Just basically copy and paste your existing articles and put them into LinkedIn and pub, uh, publishing them there. Now, okay. when you when you do that, I would recommend that you first look at that thing and make sure that it's relevant to a broad business audience because no point in publishing without the audience in mind and that business audience on LinkedIn is going to be pretty general. Uh, the second thing is make sure you link back to the original, telling people that the original appeared on your site, because after all, you do still want to drive traffic. But there's absolutely no downside to syndicating old content on LinkedIn. I highly recommend it. Okay. And um, submitting to other groups, tagging people, can you just touch on that real quick? Because I think those are a couple important pieces of it as well. Yeah, just do a search for your topics in LinkedIn, for your industry in LinkedIn, find groups. Uh, look at those groups. Those groups 
people are going to be talking to each other, answering questions, promoting articles. Make some friends, interact. This is where you want to be personal. And if there's someone who asks a question that is relevant to something you published, start a conversation with them, and on the second or third interaction, you can share the link to your article. So investing in groups and being part of a community is hugely valuable. So uh, dumping links there isn't step one, but uh, if you, it's totally legit and a smart way to promote your content after you've already made a couple friends there and um, uh, built up some goodwill and reciprocity. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. Now, uh, Google Plus, is it worth the time? Any benefits there at all? I think there's still like 100 million or more users on Google+, Plus, which mm -hmm. everyone calls it a failed network because everyone has high expectations of Google, but you will still find a lot of interaction, a lot of traction in niche groups in, uh, uh, in Google+. Plus. There, it, don't write it off, uh, especially if it's not that much more work. Let's say you're doing you know, content promotion or you have a marketing coordinator or you have a virtual assistant that does these things for you. Yeah, just add it to your regular checklist of how you promote your content. Why not? Mm -hmm. it's, there's still massive amounts of people there. Uh, just because it's not as active as some other networks, it's still much more active than certain niche groups. Um, I wouldn't write it off. I haven't been active there myself lately, but I plan to go back. Uh, it's, it's not irrelevant. Okay. And, and when you say active in groups, I mean, you just like posting it, scheduling it, you know, as you're sending out your other content, or is there more there? You're, you mentioned groups. Can you talk about that? Like how, how would you share with groups on, on Google Plus there? Well, you, uh, there are communities, and you can join communities and be active within communities. Okay. Uh, just like LinkedIn groups. It's gotcha. really no different. So very, very yeah, similar like, to that. I'm part of a, link, I'm part of a Google Plus group of, uh, for authors. Uh, there's lots of there's lots of these out there, and, and um, you know it's not about the network; it's about the people that you find through the network. So uh -huh. even if you and, and you don't have to stay in that network or build a big audience in there to, to get value, if you do believe in social media for networking and research, you can spend 10 minutes in Google Plus, use it like a phone book, find someone who's super relevant to you, someone who can help you a lot, and then uh, start the conversation through email or on a different social network. You know, uh -huh. jump. Uh, across the streams. Find someone interesting in Google Plus. If you're not going to be active there, look them up on LinkedIn. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's awesome. Awesome. Now, moving on to uh, non-owned platforms, i.e. not your own website or blog, not your own personal Facebook page or Twitter account, um, you know, other CMS, other platforms out there that aren't yours. C can you please give the listeners some good pointers on how they can further re their reach through things like Roundups or people who aggregate good content or possibly other influencers. Can you dig into this a little bit? Yeah, so there's so many places where content can appear. Uh, one thing that you can do is, like, let's say someone writes, if someone asks you a question during sales or, you know, just on the phone or at a bar or something, and you, you have that answer, especially if it was email or something, you email someone an answer, you can actually just go search for other communities where that question was asked and copy and paste your answer in there. Quora is a good place for this. Quora.com is a question and answer website, kind of a social network. And there's just lots and lots of places on the Internet where people are asking the questions that you can answer and maybe have already answered in your content in some way, shape, or form. But when it comes to, I guess, David, were you asking about getting into other people's roundups? Well, I, I, as I was reading this question, I do realize I kind of morphed a couple questions there. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them would be, you know, other things like, you know, what you mentioned, Quora, possibly like a medium, um, you know, oh, other yeah. blog platforms like business to community, things like that. But I did kind of mush these questions together because, yes, the other part is finding link roundups and stuff like that. So let's split these apart. You, you already were kind of talking about Quora and stuff. Um, and let's just let people know, mm -hmm. is it worth it or not to go to like a medium or a business to community or an inbound marketer, you know, dot org, mm -hmm. those, is it worth it to go there and publish there as well? And then we'll get mm -hmm. into the um, link roundup stuff. Yeah. So we talked about using LinkedIn Publisher as a place for syndication to repost or just copy and paste in old articles after they've run their course on your site. Medium, same thing. It's, it's a nice place to syndicate. Now, there are okay. other communities where there's like, uh, like it's an actual community of people who are sort of like uh, upvoting each other's work, uh, uh -huh. something like growth. And, and they're, they exist in many different niches, but we're in marketing. So the, some of the big ones in marketing are 
inbound.org and mm -hmm. Growth Hacker. So these are places where you can share any article, and if people like it, they'll upvote it. And if it makes it to the top of, of that popular list, then it has a chance of getting a lot more visibility and traffic. This is really going to benefit you if you have invested in that community. And you can interact with people and comment and mention and ask your friends to help your, your content by upvoting it. A lot of other sites like, uh, like the Moz, like Moz is a community where things get upvoted and that kind of helps them rise to the top. Uh -huh. One of the killer tricks that not everyone realizes is you can create your own private community, like a mastermind group or a private Slack board. Use slack.com to create a, a group of, of marketers. And if you can stay active and get traction and drive enough value to each other, then you can end up in a group that maybe you had created or joined someone else's of 25 or 30 or 50 marketers who are all sharing, upvoting, tweeting, reposting, liking. I mean, everybody ends up uh, in this kind of like mutual back-scratching society. And you end up in a – and if the content is good, you're glad anyway because everything that you find through that and other people are sharing with you is of quality. But uh, there are kind of ways to hack the system when you see how people do it. Uh, I would consider looking for or starting your own Slack board of other people who are in kind of a, a content promotion group. Uh, it can be extremely effective. Awesome. And you, you've mentioned this a couple times. Um, here today about, uh, yeah, these are great places to go, you know, repurpose your content, and it's easy to do. You can just basically copy and paste. And, uh, but you said to do that later after you've had your uh, article on your site run its course uh, for about a month or so. Can, can you talk about why you have mentioned that advice? Mm hmm yeah, so let's say you write an amazing article, the best you've ever written, and it's going to it's got an, it's got a great headline and it's like super practical but also emotional and highly visual and it goes viral. Or let's let's say it suddenly gets ten X what you usually get for a specific piece of content. If that happens on LinkedIn, that's a sad thing. <laughs> that's not really what you wanted to have happen. If that happens on medium, uh okay, that's nice, but where there's traffic, there's hope. You want to give this piece that you created a chance to, uh, to to hit a home run while it's at while it's on your your you know you've got home field advantage. A little baseball mm -hmm. metaphor for you there. So basically, if we're, the visitors to your site have a chance of subscribing to your newsletter or linking to something that you made because it helped them solve a problem, uh, and those are the two thirds of promotion is is uh, email and search. So those subscribers will help search, will help email next time around, and that link will help you rank higher next time around. So you want to try to get those benefits from any piece of content before you syndicate it, because if a million people link to Medium, it doesn't help you. If a million people visit Medium and read it and, and leave, it doesn't help you. Not as much as it would if that person, uh, if it was on your site and that person could subscribe. Gotcha. And, and you're saying like on a medium and those at the bottom of the article just say, hey, to see the original piece of content, click here, and then hyperlink yeah. that to your blog post kind of thing? Yep. Or some people okay. will put like two-thirds of the article and say to read the rest of this, go over there. You know, you can, you can find it on my site. It's right here. What do you suggest? To see the original. Well, really, if you want someone to click on something, it should have a call to action. So yeah. if you, what you want to do is to trigger curiosity by either posting the whole article and having part two be on your site or posting, you know, nine out of the ten tips and giving people a reason to read the rest. It's sort of like any content upgrade or lead magnet. Ask yourself, no matter what link you make anywhere, no matter what button you created anywhere on the Internet, ask yourself, why would someone do that? Why would they click? Why would they care? And unfortunately, too many marketers really just publish without even thinking of the point for the visitor, like why someone would do that. So, yeah, I would recommend linking back to the original so at least someone can find you if they wanted to read more of your stuff. Ideally, you're doing it in a way that gives them a strong reason because you have indicated that there's a real benefit to the click. Gotcha. I'm making notes for myself here, Andy. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that, that's a big mistake I've made. Uh, when we start, when we post a you know new post, I um, immediately start to go and, and syndicate and just put it up everywhere. I just need to kind of hold my horses there a little bit and, and just wait for a little bit and then go do that. So, and. Um, linking back like that. Those are some great tips, and I hope everybody pays attention to those because those are, those are some golden tips right there that, that will move the needle for you is, you know, let your, let your article rank 
you know, give it some time. And I think Rand Fishkin said the same thing when I was at – saw him speak at the Content Marketing World Conference as well, and uh, he mentions that they post their video – uh, in their on their site first, and then three months later, or something down the road, then they go to YouTube and post it. Um, mm-hmm. and, and this is right along the same line of thought. So you have two experts saying to do this. So I am going to follow orders and do it, and everybody else should too. And then also to get some people to link back. You know, if you can find a way, a creative way that you're not just you know giving somebody nothing on these syndication syndicated sites but you know maybe leave the last third to read the rest of the article click here so that's a great great pointers there and, and those are needle movers um yeah awesome okay yeah, makes uh, a big difference. yeah absolutely so now let's move on to uh link roundups uh people who aggregate good content um i assume this is a reason we do this is to have them pick your stuff up and get link backs which is uh, very important with with the whole marketing plan and SEO and search and everything. So can you talk a little bit about this, some best practices, some good advice, some good tips, and possibly, you know, um, you know, any tools that might help with this, uh, these efforts? Uh, so it's about collaborative content and roundups and being included in other people's roundups to get the SEO benefit and uh, links back from other websites? Mm-hmm. It's a good question, and it's a big trick. So. A lot of it has to do with the strength of the personal brand because uh, how do you, how does someone think of you? So let's say I'm writing an article about uh, puppy training. How, how Which puppy trainers are top of mind for me when I want to make my article a better article and share it with people who will uh, help me get traction on social? Uh, really, it's a networking trick. So ideally, you have positioned yourself and your personal brand as someone who is relevant on these topics and who is who knows a lot about you know, whatever this thing is, you know, raising healthy dogs, something, whatever the topic is. So it may take a while before you have built up enough authority for the, in that industry or, or category, uh, but it's worth it. So what you can do to help trigger it is as you talk to people, you can kind of end a lot of those communications with this little line that I write a lot, which is, hey, it was great to connect. If you would ever like to collaborate on anything at all, feel, don't hesitate to reach out. It's just a way to tell people that uh, you'd be open to being included in their content or including them in your content. That's really the, the, the goal, is to be very, very collaborative in your approach so that they're thinking of you when they write something and you're thinking of them when, they, when you write something. So okay. that's a big part of it. The next challenge is after it does happen is to write something that is so much better than they get from anyone else that they put you at the top of their roundup. Uh, that's step two in the trick. Now, finding these people, I, I know that there are some tools like BuzzSumo and stuff. Do you use those? Have you used those um, or something similar to that that helps you find people? Because, yes, as you go along, I think you've made some great points is, hey, keep your eyes and ears open. Make relationships when you come across people. You know, re- I actually just did a podcast with Ted Rubin a bit ago. Um mm-hmm. And his, his his big thing is R&R, return on relationships. So it's not mm-hmm. just about – so it's – once you, once you get the opportunity, don't let go. You know, make mm-hmm. something happen out of it. And you're saying the same sort of thing. But to get the ball rolling for people who don't have a lot of, um, I'm not saying not to do that. You got to do what you just said. But to get the ball rolling, or even say you're like an agency like ourselves, and we're working with, you know, trying to do this part of, um, you know, the, the whole content marketing equation with, you know, developing relationships. And we don't really have them yet. But we do know that somebody is very versed and a super-duper expert on, like, heart health, for instance. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How would we go about finding and succeeding and getting the content that we're, you know, we're working with him on to get to, uh, you know, heart health-type sites? You know, mm-hmm. how, how, what, what do you suggest? How would you go about that? Sure. So there, it's more of a challenge for the agency than for the brand marketer. Really, two kinds of marketers, right? There's brand marketers like me who are really just doing marketing for one specific company. And there's people like you who work with tons of clients. In my case, I've been networking for a long time, and when I write an article on a topic, I then almost always think of someone who would be relevant and reach out to them. But if you're working with a ton of companies and different companies, or you're new to that company, or the brand mm-hmm. is young, then a tool like BuzzSumo can be very useful. But I wouldn't let that be the end of it because that's going to skew toward uh, toward Twitter. Uh, you're going to miss out on a lot of really influential people 
the ideal is to connect is to include people who are active in the network where you're going to be promoting the content. So BuzzSumo is kind of like, you know, if you're active on Twitter and you want to find your audience there, then that could be great. I'm a huge BuzzSumo fan. I use the paid version. I recommend it all the time. But don't exclude other possible sources. Use every phone book you can get your hands on, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, any network, any group, any private group, any niche community, and build a list. So what a lot of people do is they screw up by trying to jump to the end in the first shot. It's like walking naked in a bar hoping to pick up a girl. That's mm -hmm. never going to work. <laughs> that, that, that never say never, work. Andy. Never say never. <laughs> it, it wouldn't work for me. Maybe it's uh, <laughs> maybe it's the lack of abs. I'm not sure. It's not. I think that tactic would fail in my case. <laughs> but I like your attitude, David. That's a good point. Never say never. That's that's the right way to do it. Actually, if it's going to work for anyone, it's someone who believes that it's going to work. And you walk in like, yep, I'm naked. How about a beer? <laughs> anyway, so going slow. I mean, if you really want to get the girl, get any girl you want, right? If you want to, you can go, you can uh, really aim high and connect with super famous people, even celebrities or super influential people or best-selling authors or, you know, TV celebs, if you go slow enough. So what you want to do is just use those tools like BuzzSumo or Picture Poison to build the list and then take every little step, inch by inch, gradually make yourself visible to them, connect to them on multiple networks, comment on their blogs, favorite their stuff, like it, promote it, share, and gradually become known to them. So now when you connect on LinkedIn or Facebook or some reciprocal network, it's not weird, it's not creepy, they kind of know you. Just take weeks to do it. Build a list of 50 of these people and go very, very slow. And then when the day comes, right, because you took a couple weeks getting to know them a little bit, you know what they're thinking about, you subscribe to their newsletter and you've been reading their stuff, you know, so Ted Rubin doesn't respond to random people. You probably built that relationship a bit first, right? You met him somewhere? I actually met him from uh, one of the earlier things that you said to do. I uh, published the post on LinkedIn, and, um, you know, I shared it to the groups. Um, somebody saw it, uh, suggested that he go check it out because it was a good post. It was about B2B marketing on Facebook, I think it was. Uh, mm -hmm. He started commenting. I engaged. And one thing led to the next, and um, we ended up doing a podcast together. So, Brilliant. That's it. Yep. Exactly, David. Perfect. So there are tons of ways to get a tiny bit of visibility. Take it in stages. Go very slow. So, yeah, you're going to use BuzzSumo or something similar to build your list, but then gradually build up your relevance to these people. And that way, the day that you ask, you know, Rand Fishkin or whoever you want to talk to to be included in this roundup or this interview or this, you know, offer a contributor quote, it's not weird at all. You know that it's working when you yourself get text messages from influencers that you know, love, and, and respect. That's, that, that's friendship. When people have each other's cell phone numbers, they meet uh -huh. each other when they're in the same town. They, they know when they, 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 you know, you're legit friends. Like, I don't even need to explain it. You like to know their uh -huh. birthday. Like, you're ex like that's, that's really the best part about marketing is those relationships. I mean, authentic, uh -huh. genuine, actual friendship. And, and let's let's back up a little bit of what you said. You said 50. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, if you're able to score on like 5, 10, or 15 of these, you know, getting these link backs uh, for your content, that is not nothing, right? I mean, that will help you. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, it, this, yeah. this is, it, what we're describing is a tactic that fewer than 1% of marketers will ever do. Yeah. And Google knows it. So even a little yeah. bit of love could go a long way. Yeah. But, okay. But when yeah. I say 50, it, it's what you end up doing. So let's take Twitter. And let's take BuzzSumo and Twitter, and you build a list of these marketers or friends or influencers in whichever category. Now, you're going to add them to a list, call it Radar or something like that. Now, when you go to Hootsuite, you can create a stream of just those people. So the Ted Rubens and the brands and whoever else all appear uh -huh. there. You can uh -huh. actually go, I mean, it should be dozens of people, right? Because uh -huh. you're, you're going to take very small interactions with them over several weeks. Uh -huh. you, don't need, you don't need to have, uh, I mean, you're not going to put all your eggs in, like, one basket and, like, really just hope that this one or two people is going to interact with you. Uh -huh. Yeah, you, um, I, I, that's a tactic I employed a couple years ago. I figured out. So let, let's just tell people what that means. 
you can create a stream. If you go into Twitter, you click, click on the little wheel thing. You click on that, and, and then you you can make a list, like, you know, mm -hmm. marketing experts or whatever, dog lovers, you know, content marketing experts, whatever you want to do. And then when you click on that, then you could check the box, and then in your Hootsuite or whatever, then you'll have a stream specifically of those people, so it filters out your all the other people you're following so you don't miss it, and that's that gives you a chance to like their stuff, reshare their stuff, engage, all of that mm -hmm. good stuff, which is the whole return on relationships, you know. Mm -hmm. um, you gotta you gotta do that stuff. Oh man, we're we're inching up to our time frame, and I have a lot more I want to talk with you about, Andy. I think we I think we might need to do a part two, starting with uh, sure. crossing the streams, um, <laughs> and you know, seeing that seeing that. That's kind of what we're talking about a little bit here. Let's end with crossing the streams, and then with the next one, we'll pick up crossing the streams and, and start digging into content communities and um, uh, getting more specific on that because I'm looking at all this stuff I want to talk to you about, but we're also kind of inching up on, our, on the time here. So mm -hmm. why don't we end with crossing the streams, and then we'll pick up from there on the next one. It's a great topic, and, and it's, a, it's a great trick, and most people don't do it. So here's how it works. I want to connect with David. The guy's an expert. He, he's got a great podcast. I've wanted to be on it for years. I'm a fan, and I know that he knows 11 things I'd like to know, and I'd like to introduce him, him to my audience. And I wouldn't mind if he promoted my content, linked to me, shared me, mentioned me somewhere in his stuff. So David and I have been chatting on Twitter. He saw that I shared these things. He followed me back. Uh, I'm responding. He asked a question. I answered it, vice versa. It's not enough for me to connect with you in just that one place. So what you need, so where a lot of people think social media is about building a large audience on one network, I want to build a social media presence where I connect to many, I connect to, to a few influencers on many networks. So rather than just stay talking to you on Twitter, which really wouldn't get me tons of visibility or love, <laughs> I would, now I move to LinkedIn and I connect with you there. And now I move to maybe Facebook or some other network. Now, where it really begins to work is in the content promotion context because let's say 22 people all share and like and comment something on one place. That's great, but it's not enough for me to really uh, grow my network in multiple places. So what I'd rather do then is instead of thanking them in that first network, I can go share that piece again in a different network and mention those people there. Nice. So the 22 people who, who retweeted it or who commented on the blog, I'm going to go to LinkedIn, share it on LinkedIn, and mention those people again in LinkedIn. Guess what happened? Mm -hmm. Boom. They're going to mm -hmm. share it immediately. They're going to mention mm -hmm. it immediately. They're going to comment because I know they read it. I know they liked it. I know they were fans already. So it's, uh, crossing the streams is a, both a networking and a content promotion trick whereby you, you thank someone for an action in one network, while sharing again in the second network. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, you're just tying it together. I mean, I, I really like your, and it's, it's funny, you just keep hearing this more and more and more, and, it, and it's really coming from the, um, more of the, the techie side, the SEO side, you know, the, the, the smart, the, the, the technically smart people, like, you know, like yourself, and people like Stefan Spencer, and, and all these people who, you know, six, seven years ago, they were probably talking links, 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 you know, all these different ways you can go about it. And now they're all talking about content and relationships. And it's funny how this has all kind of come full circle, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, here's yet another person saying, hey, it's not all about, you know, the, the digital aspect of it all. It's about the relationship aspect, which turns into the digital aspect uh, or the digital benefits, I guess, is a better way to say that. And here's just another person saying that. So everyone understands, you know, there's not just a magic trick. Now, there are great things that you can do, and, and um, I'm going to ask Andy to let people learn how to follow from him, and I highly, highly suggested specifically for on-page elements, of which, Andy, we're going to need to do a podcast on that as well. I have sure. uh, just recently read one of your um, articles, and I'm not just kissing your butt when I say it was really phenomenal, and uh, like meat and potatoes, like really big takeaways. And in fact, oh. I tweeted it out for you a couple times just because I just 
thought it was so helpful. Um, oh, yeah, so yeah. You, you really give like takeaways for on-page element stuff, um, real, real meat and potato stuff. So, um, so you, on, with that, with that lead up, tell everybody how they can follow you. I am publishing my, my latest and greatest, as we mentioned. I, I'll publish everything first on my blog. I do occasionally syndicate on other, network, on other platforms, but orbitmedia.com slash blog. I write something there every two weeks. Uh, the newsletter is not going to bomb your inbox because it's not even weekly. It's just every other week. But mm -hmm. there are long and detailed in-depth how-to articles. You can also find me on any social network. I have, uh, and I recommend everyone do this, I'll connect with virtually anybody on LinkedIn. Why not? It's a great network, and I don't, I'm not one of those people who thinks that I have to have, you know, uh, you know, give, done a blood test and dated, you know, <laughs> to, to be friends on LinkedIn. So connect yeah. with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or visit me on my own blog. I, also, the book, Content Chemistry, is available in its fourth edition on Amazon, somewhere that's on Amazon. All right, and your Twitter handle, Andy? It's my last name, Crestodina, C R E S T. O D I N A. All right, and it's Orbit Media. And just for people who are listening and not reading this, it's O R B I T, Orbit Media. So, um, Andy, I really appreciate it. Uh, we are going to go ahead and have to pick, break this into two parts, but I have a lot more I want to talk to you about, so we'll get you back on soon and, and finish it up. But I uh, really appreciate your time, and, and thanks for all the awesome pointers.